Welcome back to Fairies Tutorials. Guess what? Episode 1 of the series Production of Common Food Commodities starts right now. It helps to retain moisture in food products. It enhances the flavor and texture of foods. It also adds freshness. Guys, can you guess what today's episode is about? Can you? Tick tock, tick tock. Well, yes, you're correct. Today's episode is about the production of sugar. Join me on the journey. Production of sugar. In today's episode, we will look at a general overview of sugar production. We will also explore the inputs and processes of sugar, specifically brown sugar, granulated sugar, icing or confectionery sugar. You may find that there are different types, many more variations to sugar. However, these are the three that we will be focusing on. Learning objectives. So, by the end of today's episode, you should be able to state at least four functions of sugar in food preparation, identify at least three types of sugars, Explain the importance of adding lime juice or carbon dioxide in the production of sugar. And finally, to outline the manufacturing process of sugar. Overview of sugar production. Now, you may be looking at these images and wondering, hmm, they don't make sense, right? But I can guarantee you, at the end of this episode, you will make sense of it all. Most sugars occur naturally in fruits and vegetables. Approximately 70% of sugar is produced from sugarcane, a very tall grass with big stems which is largely grown in the tropical countries. Now, you see the key points that are highlighted here. Let us go back. Approximately 70% of sugar is produced from sugarcane. Now you might be wondering, where is the other 30% from? Well, as we go on, you will discover. Sugarcane is a very tall grass with big stems, which is largely grown in tropical countries. And when we speak of tropical countries, we're talking about mostly the Caribbean countries, right? Where we have nice, warm, sunny weather. Okay. The remaining 30% of sugar is produced from sugar beets, right? A root crop grown mostly in temperate zones of the north. So there you have it. The remaining 30% of sugar is produced from a root crop called sugar beet. You notice that it is similar. It may be looking similar to the, that of beetroot. Yes, it's a root crop and it is mostly grown in temperate zones. When we speak of, speak of temperate zones, we are speaking of, we are making reference to cold countries. So for instance, England. Now it's time to see what you have retained. Checkpoint. Let us see. So first one, most sugars occur naturally in, dun, 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 dun. can you guess the question? Where do they occur naturally? Good, in fruits and vegetables. Next question, name the two plants that are processed to create sugar crystals, or we may say sugar. Now, what are the two pl plants? Dun, da, da, da. Yes, sugar cane and sugar beet. Next question, what percentage of sugar is produced from sugar cane and sugar beets? Hmm, let me see if you were paying attention. 
Good job, awesome. So sugar cane produced 70% while sugar beets produced about 30%. Next question, state two differences between sugar cane and sugar beets. Give you some time to think about it. Tick tock. Yes, good. Sugar cane is a very tall grass with big stems and is larger grown in tropical countries. Good. Well, on the other hand, sugar beet is a root crop grown in temperate countries or temperate zone. Sugar production process. Specifically, we will be exploring how the sugar cane is used to produce sugar. Cane sugar is initially extracted in sugar mills in areas where it is grown. And as we said before, sugar cane are normally grown in tropical countries. Good. Next point, sugar cane is cut into small pieces and shredded. Two, it is crushed between heavy rollers. Three, it is sprayed with hot water. Why do you think it is sprayed with hot water? Yes, to help extract the juice that is found or the elements that is found in the sugar cane. So it is sprayed with hot water. Next, lime is added to clean the resulting juice. So in order to purify the juice, lime juice is added. Step four. The brown liquid is filtered to produce a thinner juice. However, the juice is boiled under vacuum to form a thick syrup. So the resulting juice is boiled to remove the excess water so that they can have a thick syrup, which is normally known as the molasses. Good. Step five, the crystals, which is the raw sugar, and syrup, which is the molasses, as we said before, are separated in a centrifuge. Brown raw sugar crystals are produced. Good. Next step six. The raw sugar is exported around the world for local refining. What's the purpose of refining? Refining removes impurities and the traces of molasses to produce what? If the molasses is removed, then what color would we have? Very good. So molasses is removed to produce pure white sugar crystals, or we may call them granulated sugar. Now, to produce icing sugar or confectionery sugar, the granulated sugar is pulverized to produce powder. Therefore, we have icing sugar to decorate our cakes and pastries. Now, it's time for another checkpoint. Let us see if you were paying attention. What is a sugar mill? Tick tock. A sugar mill refers to the factory that processes sugar cane to produce sugar or it may also refer to the equipment used to extract the juice from sugar cane. Awesome. Why is lime juice added during the production of sugar? Hmm. Do you remember? Let us see if you are correct. It is added to remove impurities and naturally occurring substances that might affect the flavor of the sugar. Good. Now, next question. Which equipment is used to separate molasses from sugar crystals? I can give you a hint. It starts with C. You got it right. Centrifuge. Awesome job. Let us move on. Let us explore the production process of sugar from sugar beets. How do we arrive to, how do we get sugar from sugar beets? Wanna find out? Let us see. 
Now step one. Sugar beet is washed and sliced into small pieces known as cossets. Now, these pieces are similar to how you would have like this super like french fries. Yes, good. Two, the cossets are sprayed with hot water. Why do you think they're sprayed with hot, hot water? Can you guess? Think about it. Yes, awesome. The hot water helps to release the substances and the elements from the beads so that we can arrive at the sugar. Three, lime and carbon dioxide are added to clean the resulting juice. Same as the process of the sugar cane. Step four, the brown liquid is filtered. Why do you think they would need to filter the brown liquid? Awesome, good job. We filter it to remove all the trash or the impurities, good? Five, the juice is boiled under vacuum to produce a thick syrup. Who can remember what that thick syrup is called? Awesome, good job, it is called molasses. Step six, crystals start to appear. Tiny sugar crystals called seeds are sometimes added to encourage crystallization of the sugar. And step seven, pure white sugar crystals are separated from the syrup in a centrifuge. So you may notice that all, both steps for the sugar cane and also the sugar beets are very much similar. Now, Putting everything together, we're going to summarize the manufacturing process of sugar. The production of sugar involves the application of several processes to transform sugar cane or sugar beets into crystals and clean them naturally from impurities. Now, let us look at the summarized step. First step is entrance. An entrance has to do with washing, inspecting, cutting, and crushing. Good. Next, we have milling. Three, we have clarification. Do you remember what we used to clarify the resulting juice? Awesome, lime juice and carbon dioxide. Good. Next, we have ev evaporation. How, is, how would evaporation take place? Do you remember? Awesome, after we have boiled the resulting juice in the boiler. Next, we have crystallization and sometimes seeds, which are called tiny grains of sugar, sometimes they are added during the process to help the mixture crystallize. Good. Next, we have separation. So we separate the, the thick syrup, which is the molasses, from the sugar crystal and sugar crystals and which equipment does this awesome the centrifuge then we have refining refining so if you want granulated sugar which would further move on to icing sugar if you wish then we have refining takes place there then of course is drying and after drying we all pack up so it's packing and then it is on our grocery stores good now let us see what you have learned from this section define the term cossets hmm. Tick -tock. good cossets refers to thin strips into which sugar beets are cut as part of the sugar making process define the term Seeds that should be defined there. D E F I N E. Define the term seeds. Seeds are tiny sugar crystals that are added to encourage crystallization. Next, why is the extracted juice boiled under vacuum? Can you guess why? TikTok. Awesome. To reduce excess liquid and produce a thick syrup all right now that we have completed the production process of sugar now we're going to look at some portfolio entries that could accommodate this topic for your sb so 
Activity 1. Create a flow chart showcasing the production process of sugar. 2. Create a word search puzzle with 12 terms associated with the production of sugar. And 3. You could create a glossary with 10 terms associated with the production of sugar. It was a pleasure sharing episode 1 with you today. Please stay tuned to Fairy's Tutorials for episode 2. Hmm. Can you guess what it's about? Stay tuned and you'll see. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and comment. Thank you for watching.